video settings brilliant brilliant i love it <laughs> i feel like and i'm sure you feel this way too i feel like tiktok is a fabulous platform like i just feel like it's a great platform i think it's a start isn't it it's the start of something quite amazing actually this short video content is the way forward it's going to be how i think how, how people learn how people teach each other and there's a lot here uh, and there's a lot to come i think so. well i mean i guess we should probably start at the beginning for people who don't know you from TikTok. Yeah. Um, but do you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Paul Ian Cross. I'm a scientist and an author. I'm from London. You can probably tell from the accent. But yes, I'm from London, the UK. And that's it. That's it. That's it, guys. You got everything you needed. You got that awesome accent. Bye. No. <laughs> but I'm so happy that you're here. And for those of you who do not know, I got to meet him on TikTok. So do you want to drop your TikTok handle for other people who may want to follow you? Cool. Yeah. It's at Dr. Paul Science. I love that. Dr. Paul Science. You know, it just <laughs> sounds so smart. So for, and even I, like, I, you know, I've, I've asked you a few vaccine questions and everything. Yeah. So what is your main, I guess, role these days? Like, what are you doing now? Yeah. Good question. So sometimes I don't, I don't know. And I'm not sure what am I doing today? You're like, mm, different things. <laughs> I do science. <laughs> I do science. That's why, that's why I put, that's why I changed it to science. It was just like everything. It covers it all. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my main job, um, my main role for the last 15 years or so has been clinical trials. So clinical trials of medicines, um, the majority of my work has been auditing and kind of setting up trials. So working with hospitals, doctors and nurses, and everybody else in the hospital, running a study, um, testing new medicines, basically. Obviously this last year, it, uh, everything shifted to a certain type of um, clinical trial, which is the COVID vaccines. So from, um, from about February last year, obviously from March onwards, it was all been focused on COVID. So a lot of that work. So been... how, has, how has that been for you emotionally? Because you know that there's like science, I'm sure you got it. You're like, great, this goes with this, mRNA, da, 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 da. Cool, great. But given the fact that people are, and we are going to talk about this, right? Like yeah. the, and I mean, to be fair, I was a little on the fence. Like I was like, yeah. hmm, all right. And I'm a super like, I get my flu shot every year. It's just me. It's how I roll. But, you know, it's like new. So it, was that hard for you just from seeing it on just social media, right? Everybody's like, oh, my gosh, absolutely, you should never do this. And other people are like, what the hell's wrong with you? You should do this. It, how has that been for you on the receiving end of that? Yeah, absolutely. It's been, it's been tough, actually. It's been challenging. But I think working with my colleagues, the more of a, first of all, many of us were on social media. Well, I wasn't on TikTok mm -hmm. at the start. I think very early on, we recognized there was a need to communicate what we were doing to the public. We saw that quite early on. That was mainly because of the misinformation. As misinformation happened and goes viral on TikTok or on Twitter or on whatever it is, we realized that we should be telling it, telling it how it actually is because misinformation can, can influence people's health's health. So some of us who are like kind of behind the scenes scientists, we're not very comfortable with TikTok at the start. I'm like, oh, what am I doing? I don't want to be on camera. And I was like, I have to just get over it actually. Very early on, and probably in January or February, even when COVID started, we saw hearing it from around the world. Family members were posting things on Facebook and so forth, we're going, it's not, it's nothing to worry about. And I was like, mm -hmm, I think it is actually, yeah. And so I was commenting and thinking, from my experience, I need to start sharing this more widely. And it kind of built over the year as more happened and as it kind of, the crisis got worse we recognized we needed to communicate more so many of my colleagues have become science communicators and we were, we were quite bad at this but as scientists i think many of us we didn't really communicate it enough to the public and i think we've realized there's a real need there to, to tell people what we do so. well and and i guess the caveat to that or the other side of that is you could for some people, you can give them every possible thing from A to Z. Here's the nuts, here's the bolts, here's the here's yeah. the recipe, here's the actual product. And they're like, nope, that's not good. Yeah. So how are you and what are you seeing? So when you said that you started getting involved with the clinical trials early mm -hmm. on, yeah. was this, so I got the Pfizer shot, which I think I shared yeah. with you. Uh, so yeah. I got, I got the first shot, Pfizer and I wanted to share this with you. And I know you and I had chatted about it. But yeah. according to, and I don't know if you saw the studies that were done up in Quebec in Canada, yeah. but because I had COVID and I had a pretty moderate, like it wasn't like a, I have COVID, like I was laid out. Like I even right. did updates on it and I just, oh, thank God I wasn't in the hospital, but it was, it was tough. I would say it was like a moderate version of it. Mm -hmm. And so when I got the shot, which was about 14 days ago, and oh, almost, almost 14 days, like 12 days. I was almost narcoleptic. It's not like I was wow. like the next day I had a sore, sore arm, no bigs, 
uh, sore arm, little bit of a fever, a, you know, nowhere near as bad as COVID, but COVID E, you know what I mean? I was yeah. like, ugh, uncomfortable that afternoon. I was able to work that afternoon, excuse me, that afternoon. I was like almost narcoleptic. Like I was sitting there and I was like, oh my God, I can't, oh my God, I can't. It was that, it was that COVID fatigue. So mm -hmm. as I've done some things with other like epidemiology and, and different things like that, they said, yeah, you know what we're finding, of course, this isn't recommended. So listener world and viewer world, this isn't like a recommendation from the CDC. It's just some things that, that I am doing personally. And I definitely wanted your opinion on this. Um, but because I've had it, the way people are saying how my reaction was not a bad reaction, but definitely a long one is almost like what some people may consider the second dose, where it would be almost an additional booster, right? Because I had the antibodies, I was about eight weeks out from the antibodies. So I wasn't a full 90 days or anything like that. But because I got the shot, it is being recommended and my response or my reaction to it mm -hmm. um, wasn't bad, but my reaction, I, I was advised again, against getting my second dose because they said it wasn't going to give me any increased immunity mm -hmm. if in fact it worked as a booster. So have you heard anything like that? There's definitely research looking at this. This is the thing we need to collect data on all these different, mm -hmm. all these different aspects. And we are collecting data, not just me personally, but around the world, mm -hmm. scientists, doctors, um, physicians around the world are collecting data in studies. And it takes time to collect this data. We, we can't actually do the analysis without the data. And, we, and every month we, we, every month that passes, we have more data and we make um, different decisions or we have mm -hmm. more evidence to, to, to make decisions rather. So I think that things may, will continue to change. And this is the, this is the issue is that it's science in action. Mm -hmm. People are not used to that, all the changes happening so quickly. And I think that's what, that's what actually help them, not helps, but contributes to the mistrust in the, in the process because wait a minute last time you said this and now you're saying this well actually we've got more data now we're going in a different direction and that's what that's what science is it's about it's about changing as you go and learning and editing and improving so. well i'm i'm down for like sign me up to that study like if you're like hey yeah. Lori, we really want to analyze you. Like we want to look at your antibodies six months down the road because that's, exactly in, it. that's the kind of thing that happens. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I'm okay with that. And I feel yeah. like, and just from a mental health perspective, right. Cause obviously, yeah. you know, I'm a mental health pr practitioner yeah. is people don't, well, people judge what they don't understand. Like that's mm -hmm. just one Oh one. And yeah. They may have such a strong belief. And by the way, they're absolutely welcome to that. Like everybody's yeah. allowed to have that. I know here, and I'm talking about the States. Now, does your division, do you guys specifically, you guys or, or your department, do you guys work with that Dr. Fauci here in the United States? No, not directly, but yeah, we, we sort of follow similar, yeah, we have similar um, public health measures in place. So. Well, because it's kind of what you said. I feel like here in the States, it's like, oh, okay, we need six feet. No, we need three feet. No, we should get the vaccine. Oh, maybe you only need one. Well, you should. And I feel like that is to your point from a scientist perspective. Like if you could say, okay, I'm going to put the weight of every scientist in the world on Paul's, Dr. Paul's shoulders <laughs> right now. No pressure though. What would you think that you guys as scientists, the people who are actually physically going in, looking at the studies, analyzing it, this works, this doesn't work, this could work. That's a lot of pressure. But if you could sort of voice that out into the world of what you would like everybody to maybe know, what what would it be? That's such a good question. I think this is what we're kind of, we're learning, as we're learning as we go, as, we, as communicators as well. And that's exactly it. It's, it's learning to communicate the scientific method and the process of science and to and to actually talk people through the data as well. So yeah, as a publication comes out and it's put into a journal and it's released on Monday morning, for example, maybe do some videos on Monday to talk about that journal and that actual science that came out today. Today, we learned these things. It could be three things, really high level. I think from TikTok, what's helped me is the fact that it's so short, you know, the short form um, video content and having to be mm -hmm. really kind of duh, 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 three points about you know, whatever it is you're talking about. That kind of communication has to happen on a greater scale from more of us. I think the more we do that, the more we that break things down and talk talk it talk people through it as we go, the better we're going to be overall. Yeah, and I feel like that's just across the board with everything. Yeah. You know, everybody yeah. everybody wants everything in a box. You know, okay, here's the answer. Here's the answer. The is this? Thing. Yeah, this is and that yeah. I mean that's just life, right? And yeah. it's I think it's a very frustrating thing for people because you want all of the answers, you want to be in control, and unfortunately, with something like 
especially like COVID, but I would think anything that you're involved with, right? Because you're doing clinical trials. Like yeah. that's your job for the last 15 years, which yeah. means you're the person who's like, mm, you're just looking for guinea pigs. Mm -mm, he, he, he's the guinea pig collector, you know, but I feel like for you, right. And, and for what you're going through, do you feel the pressure? Like, do you feel, I know you're one person, but do you actually feel that sort of obligation to be like, okay, because I love you being on TikTok and I feel like you're growing. Like I definitely yeah. have seen your numbers grow. Yeah. Um, I see you getting a lot more comfortable Excellent. and, yeah. and, and I love that it's not just, and that's kind of what I try to do in the mental health world too, is you don't just want to teach, 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 teach. Then people are like, oh my exactly. God, everything this person does is just uh, stop nagging me. Like yeah. get your point. So I love, and you guys, if you get a chance and you follow Dr. Paul science on TikTok and you got to get on reels and you got to get on YouTube shorts and you, you know, yeah. I got, I'm, I'm, I need you to get bigger, right? I, doing this. Yeah. I, I need you out there. Um, but if you go on there, he did one with the coronavirus vaccine and he put the little lips in the, and I was like, oh my God, this is great because you're getting your point across because yeah. I follow some other doctors on there, Dr. Eric, a few other doctors who that's what they do is they kind of talk about, they kind of take the information you give them. Yeah. It's kind of like a bridge and then they talk about it. Right. And yeah. I love it because everybody has, like you said, the short form video and I feel like people are starting to get it, but you're going to have those people. Like, I guess, is it, is it frustrating for you when you hear people with the misinformation and you're like, Oh my God, please stop. Oh, I think frustrating. Is, yeah, it can be, but I think, I think it's also magnified on TikTok. Like for example, you do a post, one of my posts recently had like 500 like comments I've never had that before and it was literally like lots of people saying let's say there were there were negative comments they're uh -huh. not happy with what I posted about yeah. the vaccine and um, being a safe vaccine and um that felt like oh my gosh there's such a negative feeling about this but actually the most people that saw it probably didn't feel that you know there was like mm -hmm. 30,000 views which for me was quite a lot because my account's quite small and um, so what I'm realizing is that there's quite a vocal minority of people who are quite negative. And we, when we talk about vaccine hesitant and anti-vax people, anti-vax are, are a minority. Mm -hmm. Most people, like most people, the majority of people are called vaccine hesitant. So they have the hesitance mm -hmm. to take the vaccine. And that's okay. That was me. That, that, and, that was, was me. me. We're all the same. So I'll, I'll just tell you a bit about background about being on a trial. So I've worked in trials for 15 years. After about 12 years, I, was, I, I worked on top for 12 years of experience. And then I actually got diagnosed with a condition myself. It's called psoriatic arthritis. And I was invited to take part in a clinical study. And because I knew about the process, I said, yes. So I was on, I was on a study myself for five years. So I was a patient on a trial, which gave me even more insight into the process. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, I think the reason I can, I was so happy to consent to it. I was like, yeah, sign me up kind of thing. It's because I, I knew the process and I knew how it worked from working in it. And, and so that's also given me a, a new insight, but not everyone has that insight. So I can understand that people still see it, see it as like, I was a guinea pig kind of thing. It's like, well, it's not, it's, you have to really kind of, you have to be fully aware of what you're doing. You're consented and it is safe. It's really, you're actually, you're actually more carefully monitored as a trial patient than you are, well not, you, know, you should be monitored normally, but I think in a trial you're under, you've got so many eyes on you at all times, collecting data, checking everything that you're actually, um, you actually could, there's actually evidence to say that patients on trials have better outcomes. Really? So, yeah. Well, and, actually, that does make sense, right? Because you're going to monitor, you're going to take numbers, you're going to do the weekly yeah. check ins, you're going to do exactly. versus now, like it. And I speak of the vaccine. So I'm just like, okay, everybody just go get your vaccine. Like, yeah. it's good, it's safe. You know what I mean? You're like, yeah. what the hell? What? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. So, one of the things that's come out recently is the kind of r the rare events and safety and is this, is, is the event linked? And so far, they've been shown not to be linked. But that just shows how how robust the process is that everything is checked and everything is carefully monitored it's called pharmacovigilance and that's something i did as part of my phd pharmacovigilance you know to be vigilant about drugs basically and there's a whole process there there's one in the us um managed by the fda and the cdc's there's the mhra in the uk there are all these processes that really keep an eye on everything and again people just people wouldn't know that you know, they wouldn't be mm -hmm. aware of that and so it, it is concerning because there's never been such a microscope on on this before Absolutely. Um, in these times, clearly. So, 
Well, you know, and, and that brings up another thing, and I've seen a lot of people mentioning it um, here in the states, in the state of New Jersey. There's, and you might be familiar with the college Rutgers University, but because um, they do a lot of sports and stuff. But Ooh. so I saw something on, it wasn't TikTok. It was like, I think maybe well, I try not to go on Facebook as much as possible, but I think it was somewhere where I was reading um, that said that this fall, this coming fall, mm -hmm. uh, Rutgers is talking about m sort of making mandatory getting a vaccine before you come to college, like right. making that. Okay. And everybody's response to that was, it's not even FDA approved. It's not even FDA. It's only approved for emergency use. Can you talk to people? Like, can you explain to them what the difference between like, because I think I, I this is how I'm thinking about it. Cause I've talked to some of my clients about it who were like you said, a little resistant or anti-vaxxed. Um, but where they go, um, it's not even approved by the FDA. This is only approved for emergency use, which means you don't know what the hell's going in your body because that's what everybody is saying. So what would you say to those people? Yeah, so again, okay, well, part of my studies, my PhD was about benefit risk. So think of that as a concept, the benefit risk of something, of anything. And what I teach as a lecturer as well is benefit risk assessment. So remember that the benefits of something must outweigh the risks of the of it. That's the approach we take in medicine and healthcare. There's nothing that nothing is risk free. You could walk out the door, cross the roads. You know, it's not risk free. Getting on a plane, it's not risk free. You know, it's just the way the, the world is. So you have to see everything as a benefit and risk. And when a regulator assesses a medicine, they assess the benefits and the risks, and they do trades off trade offs sometimes. They say actually, there's a risk here, but actually these benefits outweigh that by quite considerable so let's do a kind of scales kind of approach the whale should the, the, the benefit should always outweigh the risks that's exactly what happens at all stages of a clinical trial it happens at the end of the trial it happens it happened in each of the countries at that emergency use moment when they give that gave that approval they looked at the data they said right the benefits of this vaccine outweigh the risks right now as we get more and more information that continues to be looked at and You'll probably hear this quite a lot. So the, e the AMA, the EU regulated recently stated mm -hmm. the benefits continue to outweigh the risks. That's a mm -hmm. statement they use because they can't say there are no risks. That's just, they can't say that. It's impossible, but they, but they will continue to monitor the benefits and risks and the risks of COVID and thousands of deaths happening to many people in different countries, the benefits out of the vaccine clearly outweigh the risks. That's how it works. And that's why the emergency use has, has, was, was authorized in every country the actual approval process of a drug takes longer and they have to have, they have to meet certain milestones. So for example, the, um, the antibody levels, like you said about the six monthly and yes. the yearly, mm -hmm. they'll continue to do that. And once they have that data, they can say, right, this vaccine lasts for this, you know, is effective for this long. That's at that stage, once they have that data, they'll apply for kind of official approval, but it is an, it is an approval. The emergency use is the same thing. It's, it's gone through the same process. And that's kind of what I thought, but definitely I could see how that could be like, again, what people don't know, they judge or what they, yeah. you know, they fear. And it's funny because I can't just be like a normal human being who, and I was taking every precaution. I was yes. at COVID, but I also got the swine flu in 2019. Wow. So, you know, anything new, I'm like, oh, good, <laughs> cool. You got that? I got you covered. <laughs> um, but I will say with that vaccine, that was a one and done. Like they didn't say anything like, okay, well, you need to go, you possibly need to get this every year, like a yearly booster. And I know that that's something that you guys are looking at, like as far as overall. So where we are now, we're like a year, March, April, we're like a year, like 13 months out of the trials that you've been doing. Is it, what is your, like, what are you trialing now? Like, are we still doing vaccines or what are you doing right now? So it's, it's conti yeah, continuing to look at, so the first, the very first studies we did over the summer, obviously the vaccine trials happened, but there's also lots of other trials looking at how to treat patients with COVID. Mm. There's lots of what's the best drug for, you know, for, to use on ICU, for example, and sorry, numerous studies um, happened uh, related to that, finding the best medications to treat people. So it's the treating people and it's the preventative, which is the vaccine. So there's two kind of two different sides to that. Right now, some recent studies that have started are looking at different dose intervals. You probably heard you have probably heard in the states that obviously Pfizer that the study was three weeks apart. So the first dose, three weeks later, the second dose. Mm -hmm. That was only done for a, for time purposes, you know, because it was more efficient to do it three mm -hmm. weeks later due to the pandemic and the fact that we had to get for it, you know, get the trial done. Mm -hmm. The University of Oxford and AstraZeneca did it slightly different and they had a long, I think they had a longer period, like three months. So they've got evidence to show that 
a, a longer period between the two doses is, is similarly effective. So what's happening right now, especially in the UK, is they're looking at different doses, different dose um, intervals rather. So comparing dose one, a month later, dose two, against one dose, three months later, dose two, one, one month, four months, whatever, different combinations, and then seeing if the, the effect's the same. And if maybe maybe there's better immunity in different groups, and if there is, then that would be rolled out later on as a different way of delivering the vaccine. So it's just about improving it now. Well, and another interesting thing, and I can't remember who it was, but it was somebody that I follow on TikTok, and it was great. He said, just because you've had, um, he said that they've been studying, and you might be able to know this, um, four different groups of people who have had COVID. And the antibodies level, they're like, you and you can have it, and you can have eight months worth of immunity, you could have three months. And so that's a little annoying, you know, for a lot, because you're like, okay, this doesn't let me know. Okay. Like we know here, and I think it's everywhere, like the flu shot, I get the flu shot every year. Boom. No big deal. Get it. Not a problem. We seem to know every year is like, and well, do you do any of the flu stuff? Cause I know people have their own drama with that as well. I've not been involved in that, in that, that side of the research, but Remember that flu has been around from, you know, flu is an old virus. It's, it changes regularly, mm-hmm. and that's why you have your updates. The difference with the SARS-CoV-2, COVID-19, is it was a new virus. And so that we've learned, we only really discovered it in 2019. So we're learning the effects of the virus as well and how it impacts on different body systems. And we're still learning how to treat it and to prevent it. And that's why we're going to be in a state of flux for a while as we learn more and more. But I think considering where we are now, even from this from March this year to March last year, mm-hmm. we learned so much as a kind of scientific community in the world. So it's only going to get better. We're only going to learn, learn more from now on and improve. Now, you're in London. So yes. I believe, aren't the borders closed there until, didn't Boris Johnson say he's cle- keeping them closed till the end of June? I don't think, they've bought, it's a bit, I'm not really sure. I don't think the borders are closed at the moment. I think it's for emergency, like, purposes or something. Oh, okay. Well, that's what I mean. Like, I mean, or, yeah. right. I mean, I couldn't yeah. be like, Hey, Hey, Paul, I'm going to meet you over. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You right. can't just fly for, for traveling and um, for a holiday, for example, we've been in lockdown since November. So we've been staying at home since no, not all of us, but yeah, most people have stayed at home since around November, December now. Um, and I think that the rates have gone down quite considerably now, but again, we're kind of starting to reopen tomorrow. Mm-hmm. What day is it? It's Monday, yeah, Monday, the 29th. Is the next kind of reopening for oh, us. Oh, okay. So what so will that to, mean for you? What what will you be allowed to do? I can go and meet a friend in the park. I can't oh, wait. That, <laughs> oh, wait. So you guys couldn't even go to the park? We could go to the park on our own or my partner that lives with me. We can go yeah. together as a house, but you can't meet other people. Um, oh, very okay. recently, I think it changed to one other person. But from Monday, we can meet a few people, like six people, mm-hmm. I think it is. Um, so yeah, it's, it's it has been, uh, no pubs or restaurants have been open since December. Uh, no cafe. You can Everything's open for takeaway. You can go and get something, yeah, sure. pick it up mm-hmm. and, and take out and take it away. But we're looking forward to returning to a bit more of normality, we hope. Well, how has that really affected your mental health? I mean, like you said, you've been in, you haven't been able to like go meet your mates in the park. Like how yeah. has that really, because I know you're working and you're like, okay, my job's super important because it is, you know, I'm kind of a big deal. You're allowed to say that by the way. And <laughs> so it's, it, we want you to say that. We don't want you to be like, well, I mean, I'm kind of a good scientist. I think <laughs> I'd be like, what the hell does that mean, Paul? No. Um, but you know, for you, how have you sort of maneuvered the sort of responsibility that you have from this big deal to actually con- her- caring about your own mental health? It's a good question. I think I've, str- I've, I've struggled th- recently, actually. The last few months have been the hardest, and that is because of the extended lockdown. So last year, when it all happened, we have kind of like action stations. We have to do this. Just got, you know, it's kind of like working on autopilot. Just need to get on with it. And I think because it was, we had a really hot summer as well. So it was really hot here, very sunny. So even though we were working from home, um, we still could go out and it just going for walks was just, it just, felt okay you know on the majority of times as the year went on I think it was it was actually fine we're so busy we just got on with it and then once the lockdown happened in December because of the new variant that was kind of spreading really quickly rates were going up it started that's when it started to get tough obviously it was winter so it was cold and dark and got dark really early so all these things definitely impacted and I think a lot of us um, have struggled and I've struggled I'm seeing it improve now like today's really sunny and we went out for a walk this morning and the fact that I can see my friends next week so it's just like right it's the start of the you know it's getting better now so um 
I've been doing a lot of meditation and journaling every day. Good. Which is good. Love that. You know how I feel about the journaling. I'm always yes. like two good. journals, one for positive, one for negative. Yes. Don't put them in the same thing. So, I mean, and, and that's important, right? Because I feel like, and I don't know if you've even seen this with some of your colleagues, like some of the other scientists. And yeah. again, you guys have this really high level of responsibility. You're always going to have some people who are going to absolutely adore you. Some people are going to think we hate you. We don't yeah. think you know what you're talking about. Um, and that, like you said, you, you had about 500 comments and, and you know how that is. Like I said, people yeah. judge what they don't understand or, or whatever. And I don't care who you are. You do have to go, well, oh, damn, like calm down. Like that's a little aggressive, like yeah. for your mental health. And so if you could like analyze some of your colleagues, do you think like, did you see them sort of kind of go, oh my God, like this is a lot. Like, did you see that sort of like agony or whatever coming among amongst them? I think we've I think we've all discussed it as a, as a group saying well it's actually a really well first of all it's really important but as a community we've kind of got together and said we're we're in this together let's do it together and and, and learn from each other you know and mm -hmm. I think it comes yeah we've learned it comes with the territory and it's part of science is being criticised but there's a difference between critical analysis or questioning and trolling so we've we've kind of separated separated the two gotcha. as well also what what's really key is that if out of all those five hundred comments there was actually some questions there. Of people asking genuine questions mm -hmm. so it's really this is why it's really important that we do go through the comments and don't miss them because we somebody could be asking a question so you have to read them unfortunately you can't just say i'm not going to read the, these right. negative comments just in case there is something that's missed so mm -hmm. um, we're realizing that it's a bigger picture issue here there's more, something more important so for me personally i've never had this before i've never had trolls commenting well, on my post before you know it's kind of whole well, new welcome, world. To, welcome <laughs> to making it in social media <laughs> It's like, great. You've made it. You've got <laughs> trolls now. We actually, we actually made that joke the other week. So we're getting trolled. That means it's a good thing, isn't it? People are seeing our mm -hmm. stuff at least. So, mm -hmm. well, I <laughs> so. mean, and, and it's just so funny how, um, cause how, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? I'm 40. Okay. You're 40. So we're 10 years yeah. apart. Yeah. Um, so you remember life before social media. Yeah. Um, and you know, people, I think were more, even though they had their same, you know, opinions or whatever their belief systems are. But I feel like social media gives people such a platform, good, good, and yeah. not so good, uh, a platform to, rah, 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 you know, ah, I'm going to rage for you and I'm not going to understand it. And I feel like, because that was the one thing when I was like, oh my God, I want to get Paul on my podcast because A, I love to learn. And I feel like yeah. As much as people say, I don't understand it, or I don't agree with it, that's fine. You don't have to. But I feel like science in general, like I'm, I'm kind of a little bit of a nerd myself. So it's like science learning sort of what makes it tick. And, and, but also looking at it from a mental health perspective, I think, okay, my guess is if I had to analyze Paul, tell me if I'm right or wrong. And I'm totally, I love this game. Let's play this game. Um, <laughs> I think you like people, you like being around them, but you're introverted at the same time. So a little bit of an extroverted introvert, you like to be in, you like your, your space, you like your bubble, but you like to be out, but on your terms, you like to make sure things are going well. And when I see that, I'm like, oh my God, I need to get into his brain because with everything that's going on, how, how has this affected him? And, and to be fair, it's like, what the hell is going on with COVID? And it's like, Dr. Paul has all the answers. So again, every scientist, Dr. Fauci, all of that, everybody's on your back right now. So, I mean, there's no pressure, Dr. Paul, that's just funny. saying. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, spot on. I need, I need to know that. Um, yeah, that's who I am. But that's, I also watch your, I watch your, some of your, your TikToks because I'm just like, oh my God, she's like, she's like talking I'm, to I'm me. talking to you. This is <laughs> for Dr. Paul right here. This is all you. <laughs> like, the algorithm knows because it like always sends them to me straight away when whenever you publish something. So, <laughs> well, and and I think that that's kind of like with the whole science thing and 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 getting into that. Why why that? Like why science? Why didn't you become an actor? Why didn't you become a doctor? Like why did you go? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a PhD in science. Like where'd that come from? Good question. So, I actually did art and science at school, and I did I really like writing. Um, this was in the 90, late nineties, and I was told by many people. Science will make more money than art. You, know, you should go into science. You shouldn't be an artist. And I was like, oh, but I like drawing and I like writing. They're like, no, don't do that. Do science. So I did the science, and it was the right thing. So I love science, of course. I just, I, I'm, I just love microbiology. I'm fascinated by it and um, just biology generally. But I always had this feeling about, oh, I really like writing. I really like the books. And so I decided to start writing in my twenties, I think, so fifteen years ago. Mm -hmm. Put it into a drawer. Didn't look at it. And then later, 
many years ago, not many years ago, five years ago, I thought, oh, I have to do this now. I need to follow my passion. So I started writing children's books and they're kind of sci sci-fi. Um, they've got science themes, but they're just, they're, you know, they're stories. Um, and I've realized that I love communicating science in different ways. So I write it, whether it's for a story and whether it's for you know, speaking to somebody in a group or on a presentation. And then TikTok has been an, quite an eye opener for me because I never thought I'd do video. Like you could, for the reasons like you just said earlier, uh, introverted, extrovert, I thought there's no way I'll do video. And actually I'm really enjoying it. And, and it's funny you said that you, you can see me changing because I, I feel like I'm changing as well. I feel really happy and enjoying the process. And it's a creative process, just like the writing. You learn, you edit, you improve. And um, yeah, I, I want to communicate science in a creative way. That's what makes me happy. But see, that's so important, right? Because you're using your platform for what it is. And and I feel like it's just an important thing. I mean, science is important. It's going to make the world go around. Like whether you believe in vaccines or not is irrelevant. Science makes, we know what's going on. Like I'm sure, I know you're not in the studies of like global warming, but it's still part of science and like yeah. all of these things that kind of come into play. So your job is kind of endless, right? Like you could always continue to learn and learn and learn and learn and learn. Like maybe exactly. it's not clinical trials that you do five years from now. Maybe you are um, an artist and an illustrator and you're telling stories and now you're like at NIH and you're doing all of these big presentations and you're doing so and getting people aware of it now. So the beautiful thing, and like I said, I've seen you since when you first came on TikTok yeah. and you know, you're like, I'm Dr. Paul. I am yeah. a scientist. This is what we are studying. And I'm like, okay, cool. He's yeah, new. Like I love him. Yeah. It's it's like, I was like, oh my God, bless him. This is great. And now, and now you're That's like, Woo, look at this. This is the vaccine. I'm like, oh my God, Paul has a total awesome personality. That's so funny. I was literally the first video. I just took them down now. I've took them off. Like, I can't show they're, not, they're so bad. I was like, just it's like cringy. I know you're like, like they're really cringy. I was like staring at the screen going, hello, this is a sign. It's so bad. But it's but it, going from there to the where I am now. I'm like, actually, that was really good. That I went for that process because it yeah you know, it's I learned from it so but yeah. you know I feel like what you do is so damn important and I want people to kind of know that right that like you don't have to understand science. I don't feel like people yeah. really understand it I think it's just like oh this is what we see <laughs> so this is what's working now you know I feel like like you said earlier it's an ever-evolving exactly situation you're always you're always adding to it you're always learning yeah. So what, what would you say your big goal is? If I said, give me a five-year plan for Dr. Paul science on TikTok, what, what would it be? What would your overall five-year plan be? The thing that makes that inspires me the most is new science, like not, not just clinical trials and what, I've, what my experience is and my background, but all sciences, so whether it's astronomy, whether it's nature, biology, you know, kind of environmental stuff, climate change you mentioned, mm -hmm. like being a communicator about that, like the whole TikTok experience actually and, and I'm thinking about YouTube and think about all these different methods of putting this stuff mm -hmm. out there but just reporting on stuff as it happens reporting mm -hmm. is probably the wrong word but you know explaining stuff or learning stuff together that's, that's what I see um because like you said we're always learning as well you know I don't work in astronomy but I get really excited when I see the, the Mars you know the Mars Perseverance landing recently and the fact that mm -hmm. um what's it called uh Ingenuity the little helicopter is going to fly soon all these little things, um, little things, it's a big thing, massive thing. Yeah, it's, it's kind um, of a giant kind of big, thing. Yeah. It's, like, it's like, you know, Neil Armstrong when he <laughs> skipped across the moon, no big deal. It's just, just, a, it's yeah. just a little thing. Little thing like that. Little thing. Exactly. Yeah, all these things, yeah, that, that kind of thing really excites me. So I wanted to do that as well. I don't want to just talk about, you know, um, biology and, and clinical trials forever. So Even this is going fact. to be your homework. We're going to give you homework and we're going to hold you accountable to it. YouTube, <laughs> podcast, every, we're holding you accountable to this because yeah. I feel like you really tackled something that the world needs. And you tackled it in the beginning of the conversation too, right? But explaining it in real time. I feel yeah. like, yeah. And, and, and that's with anything, like, I want to see you. Okay. I could see it. Totally see you. Got your cute little bow tie thing on. You got it. You're chilling. <laughs> and you're like, hi, this is Dr. Paul science. And I totally think you stick with that. Like, I feel like this mm -hmm. Dr. Paul science thing needs to be your jam. Like Dr. Paul science, boom. Like that's what we need. That's your brand. Right. Yeah. yeah and yeah. you talk about it on YouTube live, you go TikTok, you go Instagram, you go Twitter, you go, I mean, you are the dude, like people tune into you because you're honest and you go, well, we found out maybe we shouldn't do this. And yeah. this is what we're in, but it's kind of like, you're the science guy. It's kind of like Bill Nye. You're like Bill Nye, Bill Nye, Ooh. the science guy. Right. <laughs> and so, but you're Dr. Paul science. Right. And I feel like your homework is going to be to keep informing us. Yeah. 
Yeah. Good, bad, or indifferent, because I feel like that's the thing too, is I feel like so many people, and I get it. You have to be a little hesitant in, you don't just go, Hey, by the way, blah, you know, and people are like, what the hell? I get it. You have to tenderly approach it, but people also need to know. So I feel like your job, again, no pressure. We're just putting every possible scientist in the entire world on your shoulders. No bigs. Um, You know, little thing like Neil Armstrong walk, skipping across the moon. No big deal. Um, But I want you to just kind of take it and go, okay, this is what the public needs. This is what we need. They are not going to always agree with you. And that is okay. Exactly. Yeah. But that's your homework. You know, no big deal. No big deal. So it sounds, it sounds easy to do. Yeah. But I, think, I, think it's, I think it's been a it's been a kind of work in progress for me from that first video where I was like uh, staring at the screen to, to even now talking to you on the on podcast. Mm-hmm. I think that's been a kind of journey for me and a, a great journey. It's been challenging, but I've learned but I've learned so much. I feel more confident. And like you just said, it's just about being honest and saying how it is and learning as we go because that's how it is. Well, and time. that's and that's the big thing mentally for you. I would say is that like from a therapy perspective is yeah. just be honest, do like yeah. you're doing now, do it on all formats because we need this. We yeah. need this. Like we don't have to understand it, but we need the knowledge. You don't have to absorb yeah. it. Just listen to it, but you're like super important. Right. And so even if it's something that we don't want to hear, we need you to tell us this Yeah. because yeah. even if it scares us, even because those are the things that I feel like that's sort of why everybody I think feels a little bit duped at least here, it's something I've seen it across the country, not just here in the States or in the world, but um, is, okay, well, but we don't understand why you're telling us six feet's good, three feet's good, don't go to school, you should go to school, maybe you should do this, don't do this. So there's a lot of like, what the hell? And we understand, exactly. like you just explained it, that's part of science, like you just have to trial and error it. Exactly. Great, but we need to hear that. We need to hear every almost day. Like you need to be that reporter every day that yeah. the guy, Dr. Um, not Dr. Eric, the other guy that I follow and God, I can't think of his name. I'm really upset. Um, but he has glasses and he has this like radio voice and he's like, hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. And today is March 25th. And this is the yeah, latest. And knock. Nah, yes, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Yes. Him yes. Great. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I love him. I totally yeah, want him brilliant. to do like my voicemail. Cause I'm like, yeah. dude, your voice. Um, <laughs> but I love that because that daily reporting yeah. Yeah. is relevant. So I think you should kind of do the same, but even if it's not just in vaccines, like he's more, and I get it. You need to tell us that too, but we also are beat down with this COVID situation. Like we're tired That's of hearing. Exactly it. That's exactly what I, why I wanted to do with stuff is mix it in. My passion is all science. I don't want to just be all COVID. I mean, some, you know, some people do that, do that really well, but I want to try and show that there is lots of other things happening as well in the world that are exciting in the science world. And we are going to get through this and we're going to, have robots in space soon. It's all this kind of cool stuff. Yeah. And I love it, you know? <laughs> and and of course, before we wrap, uh, I want to know when I come out to London, because when I come to London, you're going to take me out. We're going to go have fun and you're going to show me, you're going to show me London. But Amazing. if, what does somebody, if somebody was going to go to London, what yeah. are some fun things that they can do? It's like something fun. Like we want to end the podcast on something fun and uplifting. Cool. So give me top three things in London that is a must do. It doesn't matter if it's touristy. Cool. Um, definitely going to the South Bank. So the South Bank is where the London Eye is. Yeah, that kind of walkway. London oh, yes. Eye, House of Parliament. You've got to see that. It's an amazing view. Um, I'd definitely say go to Soho as well. Soho mm-hmm. in London. That's really cool. There's amazing restaurants and bars. Obviously, they've been closed mm-hmm. for a while, but mm-hmm. I can't, we can't wait for them to reopen. And that, that's an amazing place to go. Also, there's lots of green space in London. Um, I'm trying to think of somewhere. Greenwich Park. Oh, Greenwich that, sounds, that sounds like New York. Is it? You go up Greenwich to Greenwich and there's the observatory on the hill. So it's Greenwich Observatory, GM, you know, GMT. Mm-hmm. You can see the, mm-hmm. um, the, the the timeline, whatever it's called, the actual Greenwich mean line, mean time, time line. Yeah, that's really cool. That's so, awesome. And, well, and, and I got to ask you this, right? Because I'm such a TMZ type gal. Um, what do you guys think of the Meghan Markle or Harry thing? Oh gosh, it's difficult. I, 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 of course you'd listen to the person. I, I, I listen to Megan personally. Mm-hmm. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I just no didn't way. know if you guys were like, no, this is what, because I know it's kind of weird. Like, I don't know anything about royalty though. I do after watching Bridgerton feel yeah. like people should be bringing my carriage around, bring me my carriage. Like, but I need to say it in your awesome accent, like bring me my carriage. Um, but I, it just was funny. Cause I was like, like, what do you guys, it's like, is oh. it a, is it a big deal there? Like here royalty is a thing. It's, 
I think it show, it, it's kind of, it's unra unraveling, it's showing you the reality of, of this ongoing um, hierarchy, the hierarchy, hierarchy, yeah. systemic racism is, is everywhere, isn't it? So, mm -hmm. it, and I think it's shining a light on that. So I think that's a good thing that, that Megan has done that. That's so, good. And it's, yeah. you know, I just, one of those things I wanted to see, Oh, what does somebody from London think? Yeah. You know, cause she's like, it was funny, you know, I'm like, well, she's here from the States and now they're back here. And Harry's got this, um, it looks like he just got a job for doing something with mental health with the better me campaigns, yes, which I'm yeah. like, yes, I'm super Amazing. excited about that. Yeah. And I'm like, this is such a good thing. And I feel like it's the same thing, like with your science stuff. I feel like it's now your job again, no pressure, but I'm, I'm going to make this happen. And you got to remember when you become like super rich and famous and you're like flying on your private jets, make sure that I'm on there. Listen, and this is on podcast world. So you guys know, Dr. Paul science is going to get me on his private jet when he's traveling all over the world talking about Dr. Paul science. <laughs> so that's your job. But I love you and I'm so happy that you were here. And again, let them know what your TikTok handle is. Dr. Paul Science. And we're going to try to also have that be your YouTube, right? Definitely soon. I need to do that next. <laughs> yep, yep. Let's get on it. So thank cool. you so much. Thank and I'll talk me. to you soon. Thank Bye. you. Bye.